I tried dropshipping digital products for the last 30 days and I'm about to show you how much we made, if it's worth it, and exactly how you could do this for yourself if you find it interesting. So when we hop onto my computer and we go over here to last month, we can see that there is over $22,835.75 in sales. And I'm going to go ahead and just say the short answer is that yes, it has been definitely worth it because even though this isn't the biggest amount of sales in the world, there's a lot more profit here than if this was a physical dropshipping store. And that's because there is no product cost. We don't have to ship anything. And really the only expense that we have to spend on is any marketing costs that we want to spend. And this business model has really opened my eyes to what's actually possible with selling things online because we don't have any recurring product cost, which means that with paid ads and spending money on marketing costs, you really only need a 1x return to break even, technically a little bit more because of payment processing, but you get what I'm saying. And a lot of people know about dropshipping physical products on Shopify using AliExpress or an agent, but not a lot of people know how to actually do this with a digital product and how it works. So now I'm going to walk you through the same process I've used to find a winning digital dropshipping product and get it all set up and ready to go and make sales. So let's get into it. So this visual right here is really just summarizing what I used to do and what I'm doing right now with this store that I'm talking about is that instead of using a supplier for a physical product from overseas, I'm just replacing the supplier with a digital product. So I don't have to pay a supplier every time I make a sale and the product will instantly be delivered to the customer. And step one here out of all of this is choosing your niche because every winning digital product is under a pain point category as health, wealth, happiness, or relationships. And that's because it's much easier to sell products with pain points instead of novelty like a toilet seat cover. So in addition to this, 2024 is coming up soon when I'm making this, which gives you an advantage if you're watching this early because people are starting New Year's resolutions based on problems that they have that can be solved with a digital product. Some people want to lose weight, they want to make more money, they want to be more productive, they want to find the love of their life. You know, everybody has different things they want to do with a New Year's resolution and we can aid that and make money off of it at the same time with a digital product. So here are examples of pain point categories and then sub niche ideas under it. And ideally you want to choose just one of these uh, general sub niches because we can't just say, oh, we're gonna choose health and make health products or wealth products. We kind of need to know a little bit more of what that next step is. And the good thing about this is that there's really no losing in this. All of these are niches that have pain points that can be solved with digital products. So you really want to just decide and choose one that you think has the strongest motivation. You know, which of these audiences has the strongest motivation? Is it people that want to increase their, you know, personal finance skills or, you know, do budgeting? Or is it people that want to lose weight? You know, who has stronger motivation to solve their problem? Because whoever has the stronger motivation is going to be the best audience to purchase your products. So for this example, uh, what I'm gonna do is choose one that people usually wouldn't choose, but in the happiness category, which is goal setting and productivity, because there's some pretty cool digital products that can do very well um, that are in this goal setting and productivity niche. So after choosing one of those with strong motivation and moving to step two, now we need to choose like, what is the product you're actually going to sell? So for this example, like I said, I'm going to choose goal setting and productivity. And the reason being is because of course, I'm familiar with the topic, but I've also seen a lot of digital products in the space. And before we even choose the product, we need to make sure that it fits uh, the criteria here. So a digital product is anything that can be delivered instantly to our customers. It solves a problem of that audience and it's genuinely a valuable product. You don't wanna just sell shit on a stick. You wanna sell something that's good and also solves a problem. So what I want you to do now is a little bit of like a brain exercise and just put pit on paper or Google Doc, what I do, and list out product ideas you have for your specific niche following the criteria above. So when I did this, making this doc just a few minutes ago, uh, what I kind of came up with here is a daily journal, a daily planner with to-do list, science behind goal setting, 
as an ebook, the secret behind achieving goals ebook, goal setting worksheet, starting and completing goals masterclass, and video course on goal setting psychology. These are just random ideas that came to my head whenever I thought of this niche of goal setting and productivity and general product ideas. Now, remember, this is pretty general right now, so just write out the ideas. And then what I want you to do is simply just choose one that captivates your attention. You can change this later always. Just choose one for right now for this video. So I'm just choosing a daily planner with to-do list. So now I've decided, okay, I know my niche is in goal setting and productivity. It's a pain point. People are going to have New Year's resolutions. They're going to have goals that they want to accomplish and things they want to do. And as far as a general product, I think what will do better than an ebook for this niche will be an actual daily planner with a to-do list. And that brings me now to step number three, which is we need to dial in our exact customer. We need to understand that person before we move any further and source the product. Uh, because who is the audience of goal setting and productivity for this product that has the strongest motivation? And I listed a few different demographic ideas right here, such as young professionals, age 22 to 35, Busy parents, male or female, students of any level, and let's say freelancers that do different things online and want to grow their client base and their skills. And the ones that I consider to have the two strongest motivations are going to be young professionals and busy parents because young professionals, there's a lot of young people who are very motivation or not motivation, they're driven and they want to do big things and they want to be more productive and, and hit goals. And busy parents, usually on the female side, um, want to keep things organized and planned, but they kind of struggle with it since they're a busy parent. So since my example product that I've chosen is a daily planner with a to-do list, I think it'll honestly be easier to target females because they probably already do something like this. They probably write in a notebook or use their notes app on their phone, but it's just all over the place. So my ideal customer is going to be a woman age 22 to 35 who already tries to organize their life and accomplish goals but is struggling. And step four is now we have to actually source the product. So we know we want to sell a digital planner for women. So now we can start finding the right product for us to start selling. Now, when it comes to selling a digital product like this, um, there's two main routes you can take. Option one is a PLR product. This is the easiest route and cheapest. What it stands for is private label rights where you can buy the rights to an existing product and modify it and sell it as your own. And, uh, you know, you can do this keeping 100% of the sales. So I went on to Etsy and I just typed in right here, PLR Digital Planner. And Etsy is one place to look for some different digital products. Like it's definitely an avenue. Usually what I'll do is start here and then Google, let's say PLR Digital Planner or PLR ebook on gut health and try to find an option. Um, but right here, what I'm doing is just looking at different options. You can see they're all pretty cheap. And let me open this one in a new tab and take a quick look at what's possible. So learn more about this item. Okay, so here it is. Comes with a commercial use license so you can edit it, upload it, and start selling it as your own. They'll also include 10 free bonus of mockups designed for digital planners. Okay, that's pretty cool actually. It's a nice little bonus. And um, let's see, $13. That's pretty cool and cheap. Um, scrolling down here, and since I've chosen females, I want to look also for a little more kind of a female vibe for it. Um, that girl planner, $1. Jeez. So you're probably noticing, like, I want to sell a digital planner for a female, and there's so many of them here on Etsy. And that's because it's, it's very commoditized when people do it here on Etsy. Etsy is their own platform. You're at their disgrace. Most people are selling it for cheap. People are price shopping. It's really hard to make a lot of money on here. Uh, like consider this even thousand, let's say even 10,000 people bought this for $1.38. It still hasn't made as much sales that the store I showed you at the beginning made in 30 days. So just keep that in mind. And that's why uh, I really don't like to sell my things on Etsy. I just make my own store. Um, but this looks pretty cool. Um, but does it have PLR? I don't think this one includes 
Yeah, it says this product is for personal use only. So this is not one that I could modify and resell as my own. But honestly, it gives me a good idea that it's made more designed for women because it's called That Girl Planner and has a lot of good reviews. So, um, but just a dollar thirty-eight, like what the fuck, man? That's they ain't making no money. But anyways, option number two is freelancer. Like basically, what you can do with a freelancer is take an idea you have in your mind and pay someone to create it for you. So if I say, oh my god, I have the world's best female digital planner idea in the world and I want to I want someone to make it but I don't know how to do it myself I could go over here to Fiverr search it up and just hire someone to explain my idea and go from there but this is something you probably won't do like um, you know if you're just starting out as a beginner like one thing about drop shipping is that like physical drop shipping what people like about it so much and why I started with that way back years ago when I was a little chumpster was that I just like the idea of that I could start a business right now like I could Take an idea right now, take action, and get a result soon. So digital dropshipping, this concept is kind of made to be like the same thing, but just with a digital product instead. So um, that's what I'm showing you here in this video right now. And I'm seeing that here, PLR Digital Planner, that girl PLR Digital Planner. Okay, discover PLR. All right, edit, resell as your own. How many reviews? 155 Wait, yeah, it's got some good reviews on here. All right, so honestly, like this is one that I would choose. I, I would do a little more due diligence, just look for ones that have good reviews that includes the rights. All right, it's only 12 bucks. Fuck it, you know, 12 bucks. If I'm selling this for 30, I make one sale and I'm already in profit. Um, so this is pretty cool. I like it. And this is just to be as cost efficient and time efficient as possible. I don't want to wait. I want to take an idea and run with it now. Just make sure you're doing this. You want to make sure you're getting the rights to modify and resell the product as your own. And I've also created a free Discord for other people that are doing digital drop shipping. Uh, so if you want to join that, I put together some free resources and a mini course in there to kind of help you get started. So if you want to join it, there'll be a link in the top of the description. It's called a starter pack and I'll give you access for free. Now step five is we need to make the product more marketable. Because once we have our product, it's pretty easy to move forward. All we need to do is create more perceived value. You know, this is exactly how we're gonna be able to sell something for way more than what we paid for it. I don't wanna sell that digital planner for a dollar, ten dollars, I wanna sell it for 30, 40, 50. And it's not because other people can't pay what we pay, Technically, people could go here and buy this thing for 12 bucks as well, but we want to purposefully engineer our offer to be more attractive and convenient. We're not listing on Etsy. We're making our own store and our own brand, and people pay for convenience. Same thing why people buy products on an e-commerce website that they could get for $10 from China if they just wait longer and deal with all that mess. So the way we first make our product more marketable is we make a new name. Because if we just sell the female digital planner, nobody's gonna buy it. It's too plain, it's too general, it doesn't make sense. So we're gonna first define our audience, which you've already done, which is females who are trying but struggling to set goals and be productive. Our solution is the planner. And now we secondly need to choose a brand name. What's our store name gonna be? This is the first idea that came to mind for me was winning women. Winning women. Winning women, winning. Yeah, it makes sense. Thirdly, we use that to rebrand our product name. So how do we go from this PLR digital planner we made and turn it into something more attractive? My all-in-one digital planner. Now, the guideline for this in rebranding a product, whether it's an ebook, a video course, a worksheet, a planner, anything else, what you do is you choose one special word, which in this case I put my as a special word because I feel like women want to like they want to feel like this is theirs, like it's special to them. Um, one pain point word, uh, which is all in one. So let's say these females are used to using their notes app on their phone and they're struggling with productivity and organization. Um, all in one is kind of a pain point word, and one defining word is kind of telling what the product actually is: digital planner. So my all in one digital planner. So someone can say, I just got my all-in-one digital planner. I didn't just get the all-in-one digital planner. I got my all-in-one digital planner. It just sounds better. And once you take these three steps, all right, we've got a lot of groundwork cleared. Now we need to get the product ready to sell. Now, this is kind of designing the exterior of the product. This is to create perceived value from people that are thinking about buying it. And really, uh, 
this is what this is what we're doing here. So just think about if I hid and I had the world's most expensive diamond or world's most expensive watch in the world and I hid it in a giant bowl of shit and I tried to go sell it on the street outside right now and I promise like guys look the most world's most expensive diamond is inside of this bowl of shit do you want it for ten dollars only this thing is worth 20 billion nobody's gonna buy it people are gonna think this guy is fucking crazy so we kind of have to think of the same thing with the product we're selling since it's digital it's not physical like you know this pen or this watch like we can look at it and know what this is and how it works a digital product you know you got to create some a little bit of magic for them so that's what i'm going to show you now because you want it to stand out on the outside as a diamond and on the inside be a diamond so in this scenario of selling a digital planner we're going to need to create some mock-ups to use so my idea is ideally what i do i get the planner i screenshot the planner actually open on like one of the pages and then I add some writing and stuff on it to make it look like someone's actually using the digital planner and then put that into like an iPad mock-up. So that way it's more pretty and valuable than if I just, let's say, took a screenshot of a blank digital planner. I don't think that's as attractive. Uh, and to do this, I'm gonna use Canva, which is an all-in-one graphic design tool. And I would say the goal here really is to show the end outcome of what your product can do. So basically, um, I can take this here and let's say I duplicate this, or just for example, like all of this stuff started with a blank digital planner screenshot. So now, trust me, this took some time, but to show you like how this all works, uh, like it went from being this blank empty screenshot of a digital planner to then actually adding like you know, a little girly feel to it, like to-dos and little stickers and, you know, making it look like someone is actually using the product. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to show what the product could look like in use if someone's actually using it. Because what you're doing to create more perceived value on the outside to make it look like a diamond and not a piece of shit and to stand out because if you go on Etsy, like, you know, all these things kind of look the same. Nothing's really like catching my attention. Everybody's just fighting for their little $1, $5 sales and hoping that they'll get tons of them. Um, but, you know, for me, what I'm trying to do here is show that my product as an end outcome, like this is what it could look like. It doesn't have to be this boring old digital planner that you have to do all the work. This is what it looks like if you're actually using it and getting results with it. And then once you do that and you like you add all this stuff on top, um, I mean, this is for a digital planner example, then you take a mock-up like this right here and put it on an iPad. And now, oh my gosh, this is like a real life case scenario of someone that has an iPad and they use it to draw and, and plan out their life. Okay, that looks way cooler as a mock-up than if it was just this screenshot right here. And the same thing applies with an ebook. You know, an ebook cover is going to show, you know, what the ideal outcome is in words and in images. So in images could be, you know, showing what the end outcome is. For someone to lose weight, you want to show not a fat person on the cover, but a fit person. You want to use your words to sell them on the end outcome. So, you know, how to transform your body in under 90 days by using ketosis. You know, that's an end outcome statement, and that's what's going to get people interested. So by now, hopefully, you've chosen your niche, you've chosen your product you're going to sell, you've dialed in who your exact customer is, you've sourced your digital product, you've made the product marketable, and gotten it all ready to sell. So if this video gets 500 likes, I will make my next video showing you how to set up your own store, systems, downsells, and how to do marketing for free. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a big like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.